Oof. Oh dear, oh dear. Quite the spectacular implosion for this particular politician. So Kate Forbes, for those who don't know, the SNP finance minister, was supposed to have the job of successor to Nicola Sturgeon, who of course is the now departing First Minister of Scotland, firmly in the bag. In fact, the inevitability of it was decreed by various London newspapers who clearly had their fingers on the pulse. And then she went and spoiled it all by saying something stupid about gay people. So, basically she declared in, let's just emphasise this, the bid, a bid for the leadership of an ostensibly socially progressive party, that she would have voted against the equal rights, the civil rights of LGBTQ people, specifically not to support equal marriage, which she defines as, the, as well, she doesn't define equal marriage as anything, she doesn't support it, um, or she wouldn't have voted for it, but because she defines marriage as something that only happens between a man and a woman. Let's just hear what she said. Marriage being between a man and a woman, that is what I practice. But I will not roll back on any rights that already exist in Scotland. If you were about at the time where you were able to legislate on this, that's been and gone now, but you would have voted against that then because of your beliefs? I would have. And I think the example that's worth talking about here is Angela Merkel. Under Angela Merkel's leadership, she held a vote on same-sex marriage. She implemented the results of that vote to introduce the legal right to equal marriage, but she voted in line with her conscience. So what she's saying here, just to be clear, is that she believes same-sex relationships are less legitimate and inferior to straight relationships. There is no other obvious interpretation of what that means. You don't think that same-sex couples have the right to get married, then you think their relationship is inferior. That's, I mean, just what else do you say at that particular point? And that's the basis for opposing equal marriage. And in doing so, you are saying homosexuality is inferior to heterosexuality because you believe that heterosexuality, the sanctity of their relationships should be properly enshrined and protected in law as through the institution of marriage. But you don't think that about homosexuality. Do you see what I mean? It, it, it's not just a case of here's one particular issue where you object, but it, 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 it reveals what you think overall about that particular sexual orientation. Now, she's not good at politics, is she? Because, well, I mean, firstly, obviously, if you want to be the leader of a major political party in 2023, particularly one that's supposed to be progressive, don't oppose the equal rights of gay people. I mean, even the Tories wouldn't do that now or yet. Um, to be fair, they're too busy going after trans people. Um, but she could have said something like, I support the settled will of the Scottish Parliament and people and I, I, wouldn't, I won't revisit it. So it's, the, the question doesn't arise. Why has she gone into detail <laughs> about her particular objections to or why she doesn't support equal marriage? Absolutely bizarre. She's done a Tim Farron, who can forget, of course, the former Lib Dem leader, Tim Farron. I'm sure he sometimes forgets he was a Lib Dem leader, to be honest with you. Um, but he, he, he did this as well, except first he... He was dishonest about it and then admitted he he didn't, you know, he thought gay sex was, was a sin. Um, whatever. Um, but she also suggested it was down her position to her Christian faith. So let's just have a listen to what she said. In terms of the morality of the issue, I am a practising Christian. I practise the um, teachings of most mainstream religions, whether that's Islam, Judaism, Christianity, um, that marriage is between a man and a woman. But that's what I practice. As a servant of democracy in a country where this is law, I would defend to the hilt your right and anybody else's right to live and to love without harassment or fear. That's quite insulting to Christians because in 2014, 59% of Scottish Christians backed equal marriage and it'll almost certainly be significantly higher than that now. I mean, it, it massively increased in the years before 2014. I doubt that was a ceiling. In fact, it isn't. You've got lots more younger people who, you know, it's an article of faith, so to speak, to support LGBTQ rights. So it'll be much higher by now. But it gets worse as well. It's not just equal marriage, is it? Kate Forbes addressed a prayer meeting, which included Brian Souter, who's a stagecoach boss who led a homophobic campaign in support of keeping 
um, Section 28, which was, of course, or Clause 28, which was the um, uh, homophobic legislation introduced by Margaret Thatcher, which supposedly banned the promotion of homosexuality um, in in schools and other public bodies. In practice, meant people like myself got no LGBTQ education growing up. Heard lots of homophobia. Oh, yeah, homophobia was a mood music growing up. Nothing to combat it because of this pretty sadistic legislation, I would argue. Um, so she she addressed this prayer meeting, which included Brian Suter in 2018, in which she described the treatment of the unborn as the as a measure of true progress. Yeah, I mean, that's just that's an anti-choice thing to say, isn't it? I mean, that's clearly, you know, again... You know, she's gone on to say, well, actually, for example, at the moment, the legislation needed for buffer zones to protect women exercising their right to choose. And she's talking about having a, a piece of legislation which balances that and, and would somehow go ahead. But look, she clearly doesn't support, does she? She's not pro-choice um, either. Now, a senior member of her campaign has announced that Forbes has F-U-C-K-E-D it. Not great, that is it, on your launch date to have a senior um, senior supporter, a key supporter, is briefing to the media that you have F-U-C-K-E-D your campaign. I wouldn't put that down as a glorious moment in her leadership bid. I mean, according, I mean, they've got a point. According to SNP member data, 58% of members strongly support equal marriage, 23% support it um, as well, on top of that. Not, not strongly, but 23%. So it leaves about 19% opposing it to varying degrees. They're the kind of proper tartan Tories. And actually, Kate Forbes on economic issues is clearly on the right. So, I mean, she really would just be... The, the SNP really would be the tartan Tories under her. I mean, to be honest, if she becomes elected, I would imagine that the SNP will combust in a massive civil war, which, frankly, they might be heading for now anyway. I think Nicola Sturgeon's leadership was uniquely placed to keep the warring tribes of what is, after all, a cross-class cross-ideological movement which is united by one particular objective which is independence but they disagree on everything from the economy to as we can see social issues now so we'll go well does it really matter she's not going to repeal equal marriage is she so you know who cares it's just a private view well you see it does matter actually if you don't well firstly what you're saying to minorities you're saying oh well just because the leader of your country doesn't think that you're equal citizens why should that bother you yeah, clearly that's a problem, isn't it? But equally, you need people to pr in positions of power to proactively support the rights of minorities. Hate crimes towards LGBTQ people have been have been soaring, including in Scotland. Um, you know, we have an anti-trans, obviously, horror show at the moment, which is bad enough in of itself. And Kate Forbes, again, consistent with her views on abortion and equal marriage, opposes action to bring Scotland into line on gender recognition with Ireland to Argentina, who've had it for years, uh, with no none of the problems which its critics have claimed. Uh, Spain's just introduced it, Finland's just introduced it, and soon Germany will as well. So she opposes, she opposes that. But, you know, what's clearly happening is the anti-trans backlash is ricocheting and it's affecting LGBTQ people more generally. Now, I think those who wish, who actively wish ill on LGBTQ people, which I wouldn't accuse Forbes of, to be absolutely clear, but they will feel emboldened by the fact that there isn't an active ally of LGBTQ people at the top of Scottish politics. Of course they will, obviously. They've already got the wind in their sails as far as they're concerned. They're on the absolute rampage at the moment. And by knowing that she's not, you know, she won't support, obviously, the action to bring um, Scotland to, into the 21st century on, on trans rights, as other countries are doing, where she's a Scottish nationalist who won't, who won't, um, who refuse to, to challenge the, the Tory government's decisions to override the cross-party decision, the overwhelming decision made by Scottish members um, of the Scottish Parliament um, uh, to support that policy, which is in itself ridiculous, but they will feel emboldened. And that is why she cannot be, obviously, the next First Minister of Scotland. And it falls to Hamza Youssef, who is a British, uh, Scottish Muslim. Um, and it's very important to say this, because in this Islamophobic times, we're told, you know, the attacks on British Muslims, for you know, for being incompatible British values. And yet, how appropriate would it be to have Sadiq Khan as Mayor of London and Hamza Youssef as 
Scottish First Minister, two British Muslims unapologetically supporting LGBTQ rights. So we'll see how this one plays out. But I think she's, her campaign's cooked. Please like, subscribe and do support us on patreon.com forward slash